Knowing the truth is so important, especially now, in the present. There are certain truths that are definitely unsettling and disturbing, but that doesn't mean you should turn away from them. Knowing and understanding what causes people to do what they do does much more help than harm. Truth is a bitter pill to swallow sometimes, and I take it often. I saved myself from being misled into being dragged into the muck politics and the media seem to craft and fabricate. That's exactly what they do. They fabricate reality a lot, day in and day out. I've still got so much more to cover, and I'll try to put the next podcast or video together as soon as I can. I'd like to hear from my listeners. If you have Twitter, then message me. I'm on it often, and I will link you to that. I'm also now on the Gab platform, which is like a hybrid, sort of Twitter hybrid thing, crossed with a message board. I intend to frequently go there as well, on Gab. It's a very decent platform to have in case the censorship on Twitter gets really bad. Now, where was I? If there are certain people deceiving you and every person you know, wouldn't you want to find out who it is and what their motives are and why they do what they do? Anyone who's against the truth and would say or do things to prevent you from learning about serious harm that would ruin your lives They're your enemies. It's that plain and simple. The truth will set you free is not just a saying. It's real and genuine. To be able to tell what is real and what is false heals. It clears out the junk that clutters up your thinking, your judgment, and your ability to make smart and rational decisions. To be capable of grasping reality on events and people from the past helps us become aware of the wrongdoing that's hidden in plain sight and what may possibly happen ahead of time. Those who don't understand human history, true human history, are doomed to repeat the same mistakes that were made over and over. This is something else I'm not just saying to sound cool or condescending. What do you get when people repeat the same mistakes over and over again? You receive the same outcomes. Nothing's really changing. Anyone who does the same thing over and over to expect a different outcome is going to have a really difficult time. Whether or not you choose to trust what I discuss and reveal is your choice. I won't be forceful because I believe you need to find out for yourselves. I already recognize that every one of you should be in charge of your own lives. You should be allowed to take charge and be responsible for yourselves. I'd rather not even try to control anybody else. I'm not interested in being the leader of this world. I'm not into this to gain a lot of money, obsessing over material things like money and shiny, fancy stuff. That's not me. I'm not doing these podcasts to get paid. I already have a job selling books, some movies, some games, and music on CD. I speak as a benefactor towards humanity, not as an agent of greed, not as a dictator either. I share what I learn and show you where I get my information from because I care about you. I care about so many of you who are just just being misled, confused, or just want to find out what's 
what's up, why this world is messed up as it is. That's why I do these podcasts. And I also do them because I care about a future in which individuality does not die out. With that said, I'll continue. We should be able to learn the things we want to learn about at our own paces. We should be able to pursue our desires without anyone or anything holding us back. The country I live in is called the United States of America, yet there are pockets of groups who keep bickering and fighting amongst themselves. How did we get so far to live in a reality such as this? We're definitely not united. There's widespread oppression, not just in the USA, but definitely all over the world. And there's willful ignorance among so many. There are some who just rather not think or care at all, which is sad. How would anyone like that be able to keep themselves safe and live well if they don't pay attention to what's going on around them? Would relying on anyone telling them how to live their lives, what to think and feel, really benefit them in the long run? The human brain doesn't just make parts of our bodies work. The brain is one of the most complex organs inside of each of us. What we experience, the information we allow ourselves to memorize and understand, and how we perceive the world around us. It's never the exact same way with everyone. We each have our own different personalities, our own little quirks and pet peeves, our own obstacles, or each to our own dreams and goals. How consciously aware are you in your own thinking and what you focus on? Do you mostly think or mostly feel? I can't really speak for anyone but myself. So the answers to my own questions are, I believe I've become very aware of what I've learned over these months, and I've become a, an observer. I'm, I've always been an observer, but I think I've become more so. I look, and then I think about something before I end up using my own judgment. My personality type is introverted, sensing, feeling, judging. My morality gets sort of intertwined with my rationalizing sometimes. I also have a strong sense of right and wrong. I'll have to do another podcast that further elaborates on psychological specifics. It's a very different topic than the one that I wanted to guide you all into. Uh, I intend to stay honest and on point here. If something doesn't make sense to me, I can't ignore it. If something doesn't make much sense. If there's something I don't understand, I go out of my way to look it up so I can know for myself just what it is that perks my curiosity or just gets me thinking. Self-education is so important. Critical thinking isn't something people reporting on TV encourage. There are members of the press who could care less about all of us. They'll say anything their corporate bosses tell them to report. Real investigating either does not exist or gets discredited. For example, if you checked out my other videos concerning the corruption in school systems, then you may have already become aware how the mainstream 
or rather the lame stream, tends to keep quiet about a lot of that. Media corporations are on the side of the political figures and the superhuman deity gang known as government. How many of you have learned about the Council of Foreign Relations by now? I found the CFR official website. I'll put that link in the description. There's a list of companies, including at least six banking companies on the corporate roster. Google is listed under the founders, along with JP Morgan and Chase Bank. JP Morgan was one of the original founders. The think tank has been around for a really long time, since 1915. Working alongside various forms of media, TV and Facebook, for instance, are CIA operatives. As I've mentioned in my live stream video, CNN's Anderson Cooper had admitted he used to be an intern uh, for the CIA. I'll put the link to his blog entry about this for those who haven't read it yet. There are people who have a lot of wealth and power. They would prefer to keep it along with keeping you in the dark about a lot of what they're involved in. They'd rather keep all of us in the dark. They act paranoid as hell when they feel they're in danger of losing that power. For such people, enough is never enough. They have empty voids inside them that could never be filled. Without their power and not having more of it, they're never satisfied. They feel insignificant. They're not happy with themselves unless they have more and more. I'm close to finishing the book Rules for Radicals by Saul D. Alinsky. This man was a change agent that I've mentioned more than once in my podcasts and videos altogether. Advocator, organizer, agitator. Alinsky was a guy who wrote on page 61 of Rules for Radicals. The ego of an organizer is stronger and more monumental than the ego of a leader. The leader is driven by the desire for power, while the organizer is driven by the desire to create. The organizer is, in a true sense, reaching for the highest level man can reach to create, to be a great creator, to play God. Playing God, according to what we know from movie and TV show plots, tend to lead to very bad things. Alinsky's teachings and techniques include concepts of mass organization for power. This man was a mentor. Uh, Barack Obama looked up to this man as a mentor. And um, Alinsky also left an in quite an impression on Hillary Clinton when she was younger. In Rules for Radicals, Alinsky called the rich and powerful the haves, the poor the have-nots, and those in the middle class the have-a-little want-mores. Here's something he wrote about the haves in Rules for Radicals on page 149. Not only do we have a whole class determined to keep its power, and in constant conflict with the have-nots. At the same time, they are at conflict among themselves. Power is not static. It cannot be frozen and preserved like food. It must grow or die. Therefore, in order to keep power, the status quo must get more. But from whom? There is just so much more that can be squeezed out of the have-nots, so the haves must take it from each other. 
they are on a road from which there is no turning back. This power cannibalism of the haves permits only temporary truces, and only when equally confronted by a common enemy. Even then, there are no regular breaks in the ranks as individual units attempt to exploit the general threat for their own special benefit. Some of you may say, but what about Trump? He's not with the rest of them. Well, he's been very acquainted with both of the Clintons for years. He's good friends with them. I'll link you to that picture of Hillary and Bill Clinton at the reception of Trump's and Milena's wedding in 2005. In case you haven't seen that in my live stream video. I'll mention, as I did before on my live stream, on the negative connotation to the term conspiracy theory. The CIA first came up with that in the 60s when people were questioning the commission report for JFK's assassination. I'll leave a link to the CIA report I had shared. What that term conspiracy theory is, along with the other demeaning and ridiculing ones like kook, lunatic, a danger to society, and so on. It's just the CIA projecting their paranoia through the media. Uh-oh! Some people have figured out what we've been up to. Conspiracy theory! Conspiracy theory! I take all mainstream media with a grain of salt. The lying stream media. Anyone who I encounter online or offline that spouts tinfoil hattery or quote from Chicken Little, for example, let me know they have let the spinsters and truth emitters on television dictate their thinking. The victims of corporate spin parrot what they see and hear and don't question any of the reports when the press slanders anyone who knows about their lies and propaganda. The human mind is like a computer. It's as good as the input that's fed into it. A very common way the propagandists do what they do is to tell lies to as many people all at once and keep repeating the lies until their viewers start to repeat the lie. Where it doesn't sound like a lie, they believe the lie. Why do you think it's called television programming? This has been legal for the press to lie to their viewers and to omit really important information from them. This has been going on for years. I'm sure most of you don't know that. Maybe Hopefully, some of you already do. I'll link you to where you can read the document on this for yourselves. Truth is the state's greatest enemy. Big Gov would label me as a threat. Really? Anyone who wants so many people nervous, dumbed down, scared, and kept ignorant they're the real terrorists. Why? They'd like to keep getting away with messing with us, mocking us as they continue to spread oppression and influence people to fight among themselves. I'm going to have to do another video to show you more subliminal stuff they've done in the past. The corporate media commercial media have done in the past. I'll have to show you the video of the different ways media propaganda is used in layman's terms. A really good video 
that should be easy enough for many of you to understand. Thanks for listening, guys and gals. Stay safe, and I hope you had a nice Turkey Day holiday. If you have any questions or comments, I encourage you to leave them. Let your thoughts flow. I'd be really interested to hear from you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.